you know, when you do some Zoom calls all the time and everything runs smoothly, you're running a podcast that runs smoothly, and then one day everything just craps out, Facebook craps out, Zoom craps out, audio craps out, and it all happens at once? Well, this is that episode. So guys, uh, my name's Jeremy. We are Raw Focus, and um, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, you guys, please tell everybody about this. You can find us on podcasts like Apple, Stitcher, um, Google Play, uh, any, anywhere you get your podcast, you guys can find us. Um, and this episode, we've been doing these smaller episodes. Um, these are business spotlights. And I've been targeting local businesses that I frequent, that I like, uh, who are also pivoting very well. Um, and we are talking to Chelsea at the Clay Canvas. Um, this is located in Reno. And it's been around for 22 years. She's owned it for the last year and a half. Uh, but before that, she worked there. She goes there all the time. So it's kind of like a business at heart to her. Um, it, it, it's a really, you know, it's one of those businesses where you go in, you paint the clay, they fire it up, you pick it up a few days later. Um, but the amount of stuff that she pivots because of Corona-19 um, is amazing. Corona, COVID-19 is amazing because so many businesses have not been able to do that. So I want you guys to hear what she has to say. And I want you guys to present this into your own business as well, especially if you own small businesses, because I've pivoted a ton of my business, especially with this podcast and everything that I've done, selling gift certificates and all that to keep going. But a lot of other businesses can't do that. And so those that can, we want to make sure that we're supporting them in any way we can. And so she's the first business I've talked to since we've allowed, allowed to open. It's uh, May 12th right now. And business are open. My wife's back to work. I'm working. Um, we're waiting on self-employment. PPP is, is quote unquote going through, not going through. Idol pretty much died. So that's kind of where we're at right now within the world of Reno, Nevada with our governor. Um, you know, not really sure what is really happening, but, but stuff's happening. So, um, that's where we're at. So I want you guys to listen very carefully here. And if you're in the local area, you guys probably know this business already. So go visit them, give them a what's up and tell them that I sent you. And that would be awesome. They're doing home kits. And then the other thing that we're going to talk about is uh, reverse field trips where they can actually bring pottery to classes or schools. And, and you guys can paint together. The kids can paint together. Uh, I think that's amazing. I think that's super smart and, and the way to go. Um, but guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are doing well. Without further delay, here's Chelsea with the Clay Canvas. Hello. Hey. How's it going? It's going. How are you? Good. My light too bright behind me. No, I think it's good. Okay. Are you at home? Yeah, I uh, have the kids this weekend. We're homeschooling, so. That's right. Everybody's homeschooling now, huh? Yeah, you might get some kid interruptions, but I threatened them with their lives. So. Oh, that's fine. It's easy <laughs> enough. Thanks for doing you're, that. Yeah. No, thank you. I I like that you're uh, staying busy. Yeah, it's been fun. It's uh, now trying to balance out the whole getting back to work and keeping this going has been a little bit of a struggle, but um, it's still been fun. Back to photography? Yeah, yeah. I started shooting, um, well, we got the okay like April 30th, something like that. Okay. Um, so I've been slowly booking more commercial stuff. So more like I shot at a gym and a restaurant. So like stuff inside for like companies that are still closed. Right. Um, but we're still able to. Um, you know, be safe. But yeah, I did like an engagement session the other day and it's kind of going, how are you guys doing? Hanging in there. We've been doing a, at the pottery studio, we've been doing just um, painted home kits. Right. Which has been, it's been pretty good. Parents are stuck home with their kids with nothing to do. So. Right. Are you guys um, allowed to open it? it? We are, but I haven't yet. I was waiting to see how things were going to go. Right. And then figure out staffing. Um, I don't want to pay a bunch of wages if I'm not going to make enough money to offset. That's hot, yeah. So I think we'll start with um, just some reservations. We're normally a walk-in studio. You can just come in and paint anytime. Um, right. So I think we'll start with reservations where we can limit the number of people and then we'll go from there. And um, 
I mean, it's it's smart. It's tough. I think I yeah the I can't remember the name of it. The one at Legends. Um, there's like a I'll pottery fire it place. Up. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I ended up buying something. I was there for Legends like the day we went on the quarantine, and I was just kind of walking through because I shoot for them and they were open, so I just walked in and grabbed like some. Mm-hmm. They were just starting the home kit. I think everybody was just starting that process. Right. Um, but yeah, it turned out pretty good. But I, you know, um, I think the girls missed going in and and uh, doing everything there. Um, yeah, it's a different experience at home versus right. in the studio where you have access to everything. So. Well, and they gave us a ton of crap. And I feel like, I mean, like good stuff, like, you know, but they gave us a ton of stuff. And I feel like that was more, I don't want to say wasteful, but like, you know, hit the bottom line a little bit harder, especially for you guys, because you're just giving all this stuff away. We use barely any of it because the girls mm-hmm. ended up painting. It was like mosaics and stuff. Um, but they right. really didn't use everything that they were, they were supposed to use it. Yeah. Yep. No, we had the same challenge of how do you pack a kit that gives people what they want? that doesn't waste a bunch of stuff. Um, right. You know, you're, you're purchasing stuff you aren't normally purchasing paint containers and additional paint brushes and stuff. So uh, it's been, a, it's been interesting for sure. Learning a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. What's the name of the business? The clay canvas. I knew that. Yeah. The biggest, like scariest part of this whole podcast for me is messing up people's names and businesses Right. Um, even though like it's three words that I know, I still freak out. Um, but yeah. All right. So I'm, we're going to get ready to go on Facebook and we're just going to kind of talk. The whole goal of this is that we push people to know who you are, what you guys do. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about COVID and all that stuff. And now that we're able to start getting back, I want to kind of bring that back in because you're going to be my first business that's actually allowed to open but maybe not, okay. you know, kind of what the restaurants are doing. So we really just kind of focus on that. And I just call, I just say pimp yourself out as much as you can. Um, uh-huh. Just let people know who you are, where you are and all that fun stuff. Um, and that's simple. How's the fam? We're hanging in there. We actually bought a house in the midst of this insanity. Oh my God. Where yeah. do you guys live so, now? Um, we live up by Somerset. Oh, so, cool. yeah, that's a good area. Is it windy today? It's windy today. Yeah. Yeah, our offer went in before the shutdown, and then we were in this weird limbo. Like, do we go forward? Do we pull out of the deal? We went right. ahead and went with it. So we moved, and it's been interesting. Um, yeah, it's – oh, my God. Um, I mean, the first one I did of these was for a realtor, and that was, like, the toughest thing because, you know, people don't know what where the money was going at the time. So, um, right. I mean, after actually, after I'm done with you, Lindsay and I are going to go look at houses that we've been looking at. Oh, are you? So we're gonna, yeah. So self-employed is a little harder uh, or hard. I guess, are you guys a self-employed? Is that considered self-employed? So no, actually uh, my boyfriend and I both are essential workers. Oh, cool. And then the clay canvas is my, my little side gig. So sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, we, so we still had income, but the business is a whole nother thing. So obviously. But yeah. You're, on the yeah. I mean, yeah, you're pay well, whatever doesn't make money, you guys have to pay into it. And that's mm-hmm. not what you want to do. That's how my studio was with Hatch. Like when people weren't paying their membership or not signing up or deciding like they wanted a month off and they just didn't pay me, then all of a sudden I'm like, well, now Jeremy Luke Photography has to go pay for the studio. That wasn't the game. Right. Like that wasn't the whole goal of this. I don't want to take money out of my own pocket. You're not doing Hatch anymore, right? No, we just closed it on... Um, in January, actually. Oh, okay. That's recent. So weirdly enough, yeah, before, well, yeah, and like all this happened. So um, I'm kind of, uh, it was like a blessing in disguise almost, you know, just really kind of mm-hmm. chill. Um, all right. Hang tight. Cool. Let's do it. One's clay canvas. Cool. Okay. Hate this part. This is the part I hate. Hey guys, welcome back to Raw Focus. I'm Jeremy, your host today. We are getting ready to go on Facebook Live. Uh, we're going on right now because it's hitting. And um, I'm continuing this little mini podcast within my podcast about uh, small businesses. So we're, we're spotlighting small businesses and really just kind of seeing how uh, they are, how it affects. Maybe you guys can learn about this business. Um, the one we're going to talk about today, I'm sure you guys all know, um, but I do want you to know that they are up and running and they have things going on. And, um, this is the first business I'm talking to that since we were allowed to open up a couple days ago, um, 
this is the first business where they're allowed to open up, but, but um, like a lot of other businesses, especially restaurants, not everybody is actually fully open um, because of the short, short notice that everybody was given. I think it was like a two day notice everybody was given, like you can open in two days and everybody started freaking out. Like, what do we actually do in two days from now? So I have Chelsea here. She owns the clay canvas. Uh, Chelsea, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. How's your day going? It's going. We're homeschooling and multitasking. Yeah, that's awesome. I know. And uh, that's, that's actually your toughest thing too, because I was talking about this with my wife and just because businesses, like she was allowed to open her salon a couple days ago or go back to the salon, just because we're open doesn't mean that we can work because school is still out. And so what do we do for those kids where, who need help at homeschool and then all that stuff? How are you guys adjusting to everything with the opening of businesses right now? It's been a struggle for sure. Um, fortunately, we with flexible work hours, we've been able to try to do both. Uh, the kids have to tough it out and be patient with us. You know, sometimes right. they get drug along to run errands or do stuff with us they don't want to do. Uh, right. And I also just realized <laughs> quarantine maybe right now is about learning other tasks and not about um, the school necessarily. So like they're learning to load the dishwasher and um, keeping them busy, right? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's the tough part because my girls right now, um, they go to Doral Academy, so it's not really Washoe County, but um, I mean, their school is taking 10 minutes right now. I don't know what's going on, but like when we first started doing it, it was like six hours long. Cool. It took all day, but like Chloe just finished her work in like 15 minutes and I'm sitting there like, and then she gets on her phone. I'm like, you're not on your phone the rest of the day. Let's figure some stuff out that you have to do. That's insane. Maybe she just got more efficient. Well, and all the girls are the same, right? So yeah, it's all, they're yeah. like, no, they're just giving us the same stuff. Like we know what to do. And, I'm, and I look, we look it over and I'm like, yeah, you're done. So I'm sitting there like, I guess we're done with stuff. And then they have a Zoom call later that they just jump onto and listen to the teacher talk. Right. Tell me, um, tell me about the clay canvas. Um, how long have you guys been part of it? So I bought the clay canvas just over a year and a half ago. Um, But the Clay Canvas is Nevada's original paint-your-own-pottery studio. Um, The studio turned 22 in December. Yeah, uh, that name has been around for a long time. I know very little about, like, the actual history of it. Um, So you bought it from the – is it from the original owners? I actually worked for the original owner in college um, about 15 years ago. I was working there when it was sold to the second owner. Um, And then after I graduated college, I went and – did my thing, but I frequent as a customer and bring my daughter in there to paint all the time. So a couple years back Mm -hmm. when the owners were looking to sell, they wanted somebody who would keep it the original clay canvas. The way it was, Um, right. Yep. It's been part of the community forever. Um, So they approached me and I had never considered owning my own business, but it kind of landed in my lap and it seemed like a good opportunity. So I took the leap. That's awesome. Why did they approach you? Is it was just because you were there all the time and you knew about it? Yep. And I was a previous employee. They felt comfortable with me. Um, they also really liked that it was a Nevada born business and sustained here. And I'm a native Nevadan born and raised. So right. it was a good fit. And it's been uh, quite the learning experience. Once you get through your first year and all the challenges, it's kind of like, okay, I survived. <laughs> yeah. Now we can go into growth mode. So, um, is this, is this your first business you've owned? It is. Cool. Um, yeah. so how, uh, I always feel like it's, it's not fair for especially newer business owners at this point. Um, you know, because you guys have built a momentum, even though the company has been around forever and they've kind of, you know, you, you kind of bought into everything that they're done. You still have mm-hmm. your things that you want to do with it too, that you've noticed, um, but I feel like it's not fair like in this last, you know, two months or so where all of a sudden your momentum goes up and all of a sudden it just stops. Right. Um, What did you guys do during the whole COVID-19, the coronavirus and all that? How did you guys keep going or did you just shut down completely? We did not shut down. We were selling um, paint at home pottery kits. We're still doing that. Um, It started off really successfully. And then when governor Sislak's second round of orders came out, um, we shut down for a full week. But I noticed I was shut down and other businesses were still operating. So I actually reached out to the mayor's office and asked her about the curbside kits. Um, And she gave me her blessing that the curbside kits were fine as long as people were not coming into the studio. So um, we just, people come in, pick up, we pack the kit for you with everything that you need. People pick up and paint and then they drop it off when they're done and we glaze it and fire it. Um, That's awesome. So um, 
Yeah, you guys still do the glaze and, and the firing, right? You guys still mm-hmm. do. I know. I noticed like a lot of these, um, you know, other companies that do the same thing. Um, a lot of them are focused on, you know, you paint there, you take it home, you don't have to do that. Um, and I think the girls kind of, my girls kind of love that. They love the aspect of we yeah. do it, and then like a few days later, we come back and grab everything, and you, know, you kind of forget. Um, we're also in the bad habit of we forget for like weeks. And then we're sure. like, oh, crap, do we still have that? And then we have to go yeah. back in and, and grab it. Um, so as of right now, people can still go in and get these home kits, right? Because you guys haven't, right. you, even though we're allowed to be open with, I'm sure, restrictions of the six foot um, and all that, you guys still have the home kits. Um, tell me about what's going to be going on the next couple weeks for you guys. Uh, I think we're going to stick with the home kits for the next week or so while we see how business is open and how things are going. And then we will start with um, taking paint in the studio by reservation. So we're normally okay. that you can just walk in, you can paint. We will normally take as many people as the studio will seat. Um, right. Obviously with their restrictions, we won't be doing that. So we will um, take reservations, limit the number of painters in the studio, um, follow all of the required guidelines for sanitization. And, um, and then we'll just increase from there as we see how things are going. I love that. Um, how... How are reservations going to work or how soon um, can I do it? So like, can I reserve, do you think I can reserve that day or like, hey, or come back in a couple hours or what do you guys think? Um, that's going to be yet to be determined. The right. hard part, how long like are people said, in there? Um, some people paint for an hour. I have people who come and paint all day. So we might right. have to start with kind of two hour blocks. And then like you had mentioned, we didn't really have any, um, heads up that we could open. So trying to staff and schedule and get people in the schedule. Um, because I am a a mom and I have another job. Um, Right. I can't just be there all the time. So I'll need to figure out some set hours where I can take reservations, um, and book them up until we book them. And then from there, we'll see how we can do. And that'll be nice to be able to manage the staff too, and who's there. Um, so that you guys can plan it. I don't blame you for not being fully open at this point. I think the two day notice was insane. Um, I also know that a ton of restaurants are actually making more money right now with all their curbside and takeouts than Mm -hmm. just fully opening because yes, they have to bring people in. They're going to have to clean everything as they go. And we don't have all the rules yet that we're supposed to have, even though we're open. So I think it's a smart thing for you to kind of lay low and, and, and just go. And then, you know, even the first week it's open. I mean, God, we just heard that story about the ice cream restaurant, the ice cream place on Facebook. Did you hear about that? They opened for the first day and then um, they asked people to make reservations um, two hours in advance and then come pick it up and then they'd be able to kind of, it, it's an ice cream shop. Um, well, apparently people were spitting on them, uh, trying to fight the staff and everything for not oh, getting their wow. ice cream when they wanted it. So they ended up closing that same day. And so it's stuff like that where we hope the public is a little cooler, you know, the understandable, yeah. like, you know, like guys chill. I think squeeze had something too the other day with that. Um, so let's go back into the business. Tell me everything that, that I can do there. Um, so I always take my girls in there. They always paint. I'm always kind of off to the side. Sometimes I'll get an inkling to paint, but like my, my attention span doesn't last that long painting. Sure. What is it that you guys offer there uh, for anybody that goes in? I, well, I think people do assume it's a children's based business, but um, it's great for adults too. I think I lost your so, audio here. Do you hear me still? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hold on. Let me yes, ask, no. ask the book here. This is what I love about Zoom. I'm going to mute your audio. I'm going to unmute. Can you hear me? Nope, nothing. Yeah, I can take my iPods out and see. Oh, you're AirPodding. You're AirPodding. Well, I was worried about the children coming Hold in. Hold on. And- I think you might have to get off Bluetooth or adjust your audio settings on this here. So I'm going to let you adjust real quick. Reset. So guys, we're talking to Chelsea over at the Clay Canvas, and um, we have a good a bunch of good information. She's working on her audio right now. Um, the question I'm asking is, is she... Um, Oh, what do they offer? What do they do? What are they, what's, what's going on and what do they have? It says she's connecting to audio. So she's going to go through that. Hear me now? Not yet. Huh. I mean, well, I love let's... Zoom, but it does this every once in a while. Like, but never during the actual thing. It always happens before. 
I disconnected my. Do you want to pop off and then pop back? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. If you want to jump off and then jump back on to the Zoom call, we can try that. Okay. I'll have filler yeah. stuff. Um, so I'm going to let her rock that out, guys. Oh, my God. My face is huge on the screen right now. So the Clay Canvas is a, um, a business that you guys can go in. You guys know what it is, right? It's like a pottery place. You paint. You come back. Um, you pick it up a few days later. Um, but I was really curious about this because when the coronavirus first started happening, I... I remember it was super snowy. I went to Legends to a place called All Fired Up, um, which is similar but, but different. And um, I was trying to find ways to keep my girls busy. And this was like right when it very first started. So I, I couldn't find um, anything. And they were in the midst of setting everything up. They really didn't have much. So um, I got a couple things, took it home. My girls painted and did mosaics for two or three days. And it was actually really cool. And so, I see you. Are you there? Uh, can you hear me? Oh, no. I now? still don't hear you. <laughs> I wonder what's going on. Maybe we'll do a redo. We might have to do a redo of this. Although, yeah. it's just, there's no time limit. We're just online. I mean, it's not like the time limit. All right. I'm going to walk her through this. So, if you guys are on Zoom and you want to walk people through this, this is what you do. So, um, Chelsea, if you go down to the little button on the bottom left where it says um, the little microphone. Mm -hmm. If you click that up arrow, selector microphone, does it say um, same as system or does it say computer? What does it say? Oh, uh, you muted yourself right there. Yeah, I don't have that option. Guys, if you're listening, can you hear her or is it just me? Huh. Um, yeah, because I have, when I sit on the top, it says select microphone, same as system, my beats, microphone. Are you texting me? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so I've put down a link, guys, to Chelsea and also the clay canvas on this uh, live as well. Oh, you can hear her? So I can't hear her? Oh, <laughs> it's, I'm not the broken Are one. Are you kidding? <laughs> Prove it. We can hear you both. All right. Well, I can't hear uh, then. Okay. Chelsea, it's my bad. So hold on. Let me see why I can't hear you. <laughs> I just thought I was the, uh, the crazy person. My kids have to teach me how to zoom. Oh, <sighs> say something. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't change anything. I just turned these off and on. Oh, weird. Okay, well, I... Hey, well, it looks like we actually got more people onto here, which was nice. Sweet. They're helping <laughs> me out. All right, thanks, guys. We're continuing. Okay, so um, there should be like a notice or something because it's basically telling me I can hear everything. Right. And nothing else is happening. All right, so we are... Um, all right, so Clay Canvas, I just wanted to know everything that you guys offer within clay canvas themselves. Um, I'm, you guys do parties. You guys do all that stuff, right? Parties and, and events and all that. Yep. We what, do. Tell me everything. Um, so we are strictly paint your own pottery. It's contemporary. Um, so we don't make the pottery there. We just, you paint, we glaze it and fire it. And right. then you have a piece when you're done. Um, we do tons of birthday parties for both um, kids and adults. It usually <laughs> are for kids, but actually like you're welcome to um, bring in food and drink. You can drink wine and stuff. And oh, everybody, yeah, everybody gets a little more Bob Ross when you can enjoy. We're right next door to Napa Sonoma, so people usually pop over and get some stuff there and bring it in. Um, the other thing we do a lot of that people aren't always aware is um, field trips for classrooms. So oh. when school open, we will actually come to your classroom and do a project with kids. Um, I've been packing pottery kits for teachers currently who are dropping them off for their students as like end of year gifts. So, okay. I don't realize we do. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't even think that was the thing. So, um, we could talk to our school and you guys actually bring everything there. Um, that's, that's amazing. So it's like a reverse field trip. 
Yes, it's pretty fun too. We bring some, we'll um, do a project for whatever the teacher wants to do. Sometimes they're themed, like if we're, one time they were learning about the state of Nevada and they all painted like Nevada's desert tortoises and right. that kind of stuff. Um, Christmas time, we do a huge amount of stuff for, um, you know, their little take home gift for their parents. Right. Um, we do a lot of Mother's Day, Father's Day gifts. So um, we, we will come to you, we'll come to your daycare, mm. your, your center, your, elementary school I we'll love start. that yeah how um is that wh where's that information or is there something that you can send me or, or email me um that I can put out there so like I can give it to the yeah. school yes I have um it's on my website I also have flyers okay. up. I'll send you like an electronic version of the flyer. yeah I'd love to I'd love to share it and post it and then give it to our school and all that because um that, that's the, our type of school does stuff like that all the time and I think it's amazing how much um, so you order the, you order the pottery, right? And you order from, I'm sure a company that makes pottery for all these people. Mm -hmm. Um, how, do you guys get to ask them to make certain things? Is, how customizable is that within you guys? We used to have a local, uh, manufacturer who could make custom stuff for us. She's not in business anymore. Right. So pretty limited from that aspect. Um, although there's a huge amount of variety out there and uh, obviously you can paint it however you want. So um, lots of options on that side of things and everything's completely usable when you're done. So that's the other thing that's cool about it that the kids like is they get to, you know, use their pottery piece when they like a cup or something like that, that they can actually use for something. Yeah. The other thing that we do a lot of is custom orders for businesses um, or for, let's say a bride and groom are getting married. We'll custom right. paint is. Um, I have actually my real estate guy who is amazing. Every time he closes on a house, he orders a custom platter that we paint. Oh, cool. So it'll have, you know, the, the family's name or whatever information he wants on there, established 2020. And he gives that as their like closing gift with a bunch of other goodies and stuff. So I love that stuff. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a few things that, you know, the girls have painted in the past. Um, and, you know, like, we, we, I think we do it for, like, Christmas or something. We have, like, something for Santa, like a little one that only comes out for Santa, the, his cookies on there. So hopefully that never breaks. Um, the reverse field trip, actually, I think is, is amazing. Um, how, how are you guys planning on reopening here? I know we talked about the reservations. Um, is, there a, is there a date in your mind? Is it like June 1st or something where people can start doing that? And then when the reservations happen, is that something we're doing online? I think I'll start taking reservations next week and we'll see how that goes. We'll start with weekend and evening reservations. Um, and I will, it's not currently set up on my website, but I'll have my website girl set it up that we can take reservations online. Um, okay. In the meantime, if anybody wants a reservation, they can send me um, a message on Facebook or Instagram, um, and I can set that up personally for them currently. Okay. And I think what we'll do is reservations probably through the rest of May, and then resume normal walk-in business hours in June, obviously with limited capacity. It sounds like we'll be social distancing for a while, so we'll yeah. probably... I, uh, yeah, I think, I think that June is going to be the safest. It's tough. Are there any businesses around you guys that are open right now? Napa Sonoma next door has been open, um, for takeout and curbside. Mm -hmm. And then Candle Vino is another small locally owned business. He's two doors down from right. three doors from me. He's been doing website sales and stuff, but I know he's looking at something similar with, um, taking some reservations and doing smaller, um, group setting stuff until he resumes normal operations. Uh, yeah, um, that's good. Yeah. I think once everybody kind of opens together, that might make, um, that might make it a little easier for everybody to kind of open up in the shopping center as well. Yeah. My concern too, is even if we open, it doesn't mean people are ready to get out in the real world and, exactly. you know, fully, fully paint. So I feel like we'll go stepwise. We'll see how things are going. Um, and if the demand is there, we will meet it. So if, people <laughs> are wanting to paint, if I'm getting reservations, I'll make a way to accommodate. Right. So before you guys, uh, the whole like um, curbside, the whole kit making, was that new? Is this new to you guys or did you guys have that actually before? We did not have that before. Um, we would, like I said, we'll come to your school or your party, but we weren't um, packing individual kits previously. Uh, it was just something that we, you know, this whole thing came, the closure came down and I panicked and, right. you know, I have this small business to keep the doors open. What are we going to do? And so 
It actually, it was great. I had a lot of parents home with their kids with nothing to do who were happy to. Um, okay. And then actually, I had a lot of adults who were setting up their own Zoom meetings and painting with their family members. So. Oh, that's cool. That may be a good idea too, to even set up like a, I don't know, like a Zoom with you guys and then everybody mm -hmm. picks up their stuff first and then paints everything together. Yeah, um, I did meeting with a podcast group last week that wanted to paint coffee mugs. So we set that up for them. I facilitated the Zoom meeting. They just picked up their kits and they all painted together. That's so, so smart. That's well, so smart. So is this something, do you think that you will continue as far as like the kits and all that? Can I plan on buying kits when everything's open to take it home with my kids? I do. I think I'll give people those options um, maybe forever, but for the mm -hmm. time, you know, for the foreseeable future, anybody who has limitations to being able to go out, they have health concerns, they're not going to want to be in public probably. So giving them the opportunity to paint at home is, uh, I think, a great choice and we will probably continue this forever. I had great feedback. People really enjoyed being able to paint at home in their jammies and um, right. art therapeutic, especially in times like this where people are stressed. Um, art is good therapy to kind of just do something else for a little bit. I think it's cool. And I, what, what I like about your business is everybody's an artist, you know, even if they're not an artist, it's like you walk through, you see all the samples, you see everything that people have done. Um, you get some inspiration and then I go back and I, you know, do my painting and I, you know, I, I try to do my best and I'm like, Oh, I'll be able to drink out of this coffee cup forever. And I always pick stuff that I can use. Right. Um, which is, which is always nice. Um, we have a good like three or four minutes here. So what I want to do is, um, tell people how to find you. Um, are you doing any specials or anything that's going on now or um, uh, anything like that? Is there anything happening now? I am going to be, the sample will be coming out this week um, for all of the like kindergarten grads who aren't getting to do graduation, that kind of stuff. I'm going to be coming out with kind of a commemorative handprint plate or a tile that parents, all they have to do is get the handprint and a signature and then we'll, we'll do the rest. We'll put their, oh, their cool. name, and stuff on there to kind of commemorate that you know kindergarten grad of 2020 all those kids Love that are that. Out. so we'll have that coming out um i do have some pre-packed kits um like you can get a four pack of wine glasses if you want to do an, an adult zoom meeting um mm -hmm. and i can put the zoom meeting for everybody so we're doing that but basically the nice thing about our kits is they're totally customizable a lot of the other studios it's kind of you get what you get um right. where i will make you a kit out of anything in the studio and i will put the colors in there that you want to paint with. Um, and then we also, I have a friend who owns a business in Gardnerville. She's been picking up kits um, from me to sell out of her studio. That's Studio Miraki in Gardnerville. So it's, it's providing awesome. support to, Gardnerville doesn't have anything like what we have up here in Reno. Right, and it helps you guys out here as well. So that's, that's super smart. Yeah, so we're sharing the, the art love around. Um, and yeah, we'll just see how things pan out here over the next few weeks and take it one day at a time. I love that. So it sounds like you guys have a really good following. You have a lot of people that, that have been with you guys for a while, especially 22 years in the business. Um, and you guys have pivoted quite well. I think, um, talking to a lot of other businesses before you, um, it was a sl small pivot. Everybody's like, we're doing what we can, but it seems like you guys have like done everything you possibly can in this really cool entrepreneur spirit. Um, and for, for, for your first business or, you know, I guess, you know, going into the world of self-ownership, um, right. you guys are actually doing crazily well. That's really good. Uh, anything else you want to tell the people while I have you? Uh, no, just that we'd love to have you paint with us. We will come to you. You come to us. I'll pack you a kit. Um, and if, if you have teachers who want to do anything for the end of the school year, um, I would love to take care of that too. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, um, email the clay canvas Reno at yahoo.com or our website, the clay canvas.com has all of our contact information on there too. I love that. So guys, I mean, the information's there, uh, tag the teachers in this post, let them know that there are these things available. I know my girls would love that. I think, uh, my, my girls would love to be on class on zoom with each one of their teachers doing something and even making gifts for their teacher or something like that. That'd be awesome. Um, Chelsea, we're going to pop off of live here. Thank you so much for being part of it. Don't leave yet. So bye Facebook. Thank you everybody. <laughs> awesome. That went great. Um, yeah. no, thank you. I'm super excited. I, I always go into these trying to know as little as possible as what you guys are doing. 
right, right now so that it's like more interesting for me so I can actually ask real questions that people might be asking. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, uh, and how are you taking orders? You're taking orders via website too, besides your email? Uh, it's all over email right now. I was okay. trying to set a site to do, um, keep track of my inventory, but everything moves so fast that it's right. been an undertaking I haven't quite managed yet. Sweet. So, but yeah, um, any of yeah, any I'll say, I'll stick with the Facebook. We'll grab some stuff from you guys. Um, I'm, I'm actually over that area quite a bit. Um, well, I was for like the Starbucks and all that um, mm -hmm. for meetings and everything. Um, but yeah, thank you. I'm glad you guys are doing well. The kids didn't jump in at all. No, I mean, it's been a struggle for sure. And, uh, yeah. you know, we're not doing the sales we normally do, but I, I think they're, we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think we'll survive this. We'll come out on the other side. It's just not been an easy road. Did you guys go for the PPP and all that stuff? Yeah, so I applied for the, the EIDL first, and mm -hmm. I applied for the PPP, and then, of course, the money was gone before my stuff even got looked at. Right. Um, I had the second round, though, and I did get a small deposit in my checking account unexpectedly. Ooh. Um, I couldn't tell at first which it was, Right. Um, but it, it was the PPP. Oh, cool. So, um, but they're pretty limited in what they'll give you. They basically take the wages that you pay right. they, per month. They multiply it by two and a half and that's what they give you. And I have a, a very tiny staff with um, right. a few like high school and college kids who work with me. So it wasn't significant, but it did come through and I was pleased with that. So it'll help. Anything will help. Right. I mean, yeah, we, it's, it's so frustrating. I mean, we, I got the PPP for self-employment which is going to be less than everybody else's because um, right. it's just one person. Um, but yeah, but yeah, like same here. Like I got a random thing in the, in my checking account one day and I was like, what the heck is this? Um, but I got nothing from idle. I didn't get the grant. I didn't get anything. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things where I don't know what's happening, but I'm, that's kind of what made me go back to work. I was like, you know what? I'm done. Like I'm done waiting. Yep. I can shoot outside. I can do whatever. What um, happened? I don't have to worry about it business because she owns the a hair salon right yeah so they um so well she she used to own a hair salon sold it now she works at a hair salon with the girl who used to own it gotcha. so she, we just don't own it anymore which is amazing so um yeah so they opened up they were allowed to open up they have their six foot rules their mask and all that stuff um but that's really all they kind of told them there's you can't um you can't style the hair in salon anymore so no yeah. blow dryers and all that stuff. Uh, that's really the limited thing. Yeah. So Lindsay's only taking maybe two or three clients, um, like three days a week. Mm -hmm. And she's just trying to buffer that out and push it out. But we don't know how long she, she yeah, it hurts. You know, she's like, I can't wear the mask all day because it keeps falling when I talk. I keep having to adjust it. So I'm still touching my face. Yeah. Um, I wish it would come out with some sort of universal mask or something that salon owners can wear that they would allow them to wear but they don't have that yet well that's your next business adventure <laughs> i know well i was like all these people making masks i'm sitting there like holy crap if i would have known i would have started making masks and whatever because i think i spent like on myself and all my masks for everything and the girls i spent like 500 dollars on masks in the last month oh yeah we, like, tried we want this design yeah it's the same issue it doesn't fit your face it doesn't stay behind your ears um my boyfriend and I both are still working. We have to wear masks at work all day. So, right. uh, it's you guys good. provide your own masks. Um, the company provided some that weren't fabulous. Um, right. and then actually we had some friends and my mom actually sewed us a couple masks that worked a little better. So oh, good. Yeah. 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 We bought a and Etsy has a ton and then land now, you know, you, I did one search for masks. And so every Instagram post and Facebook post as I go through, it's something right. about masks. And now yeah. I'm finding all these cool ones and I'm like, oh, I got to get that cool one. I can't, wear, <laughs> can't wear a stupid mask out and about. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it is. Thank you so much. What do you got going on the rest of the day? Just homeschooling? working. Yep. Homeschooling and working remotely. That's awesome. Is, is all your work remotely pretty much right now? Um, my daughter, I'm remote when I don't, I'm a hundred okay. percent work. So love it. Well, yeah, good. Yeah. Your, your pivoting is amazing. So, um, I like that. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, so many businesses have closed because they didn't know how to pivot or they just gave up or whatever, but the amount of stuff that you're doing with the Gardnerville and, and pushing that, I think it's amazing. And also what I'm telling people is this is another aspect of your business. I mean, we learn how to pivot our business 
any way we can when we're forced to. So you guys have this whole online side where, um, holy crap. I mean, even the, the, the field trips thing, I think is crazy. I think kids, every school needs to do that. And hopefully you guys get that first before everybody else starts doing that too. Cause that's how it always is. Yes, for sure. <laughs> All right. I'll push it out, but thank you so much. You can end the call whenever you want and, um, I'll talk to you soon. Nice talking to you, Jeremy. Thanks. You too. Bye.